Hello everybody and welcome to the 2024 Whelan Mazda MX-5 Cup. John Heindorf and Shay Adam with you at Sebring International Raceway for the second time of asking this weekend. This kicks off our Fast Friday entertainment and it's likely to be a fast and furious 45 minutes coming up for you off the back of a crackery, cracking opening race yesterday. We're right in the middle of Coralie in the Central Highlands region on a racetrack that has history in spades. Just on three and three quarter miles, Gurney Bend, the Fangio Chicane, Collier Curve, Bishop Bend, Jean de Bian and Ullman, all names from the past in this great circuit's history. Started life as a B17 training base, was turned into a racetrack and started making history. The original home of Formula One in the United States of America and it has built a phenomenal endurance heritage here. I mentioned we had a race yesterday. It was an absolute cracker, although not perhaps what we're used to be seeing. At the very start of the race, we had three cars that disappeared off into the distance. Uh, after a little bit of argy-bargy when Alex Matura was pushed off the circuit, it split the pack and the top three got away. From then on, early in the race, it was all about people fighting back. The Hordeland spin didn't help either. Then down at turn seven, Conor Zilic going for the lead on Tyler Gonzalez with Nick Cicero in the background. Eventually, Gresham Wagner dragged himself and part the pack to make it four for the win at the end of the race. And going into sunset, it was anybody's race, but the white and green car of Tyler Gonzalez came through to snatch a typically Mazda-type victory for the first time of asking here at Sebring International Raceway. Shay Adam alongside me here in the booth. Good to have your company, Shay. Thank you very much for uh, joining us this morning again. Uh, that actually looked a close finish, but in Mazda terms, uh, that was a bit disappointing, wasn't it? <laughs> very much a letdown considering some of the great finishes we've had here at Sebring International Raceway in the past 2021. First to third, separated by three thousandths of a second. Yes, first to third, meaning the second was in there somewhere. It was a bit of good behavior that we saw yesterday. And I was talking to some of the competitors in the paddock this morning, John. Everyone seems to have this sense today. It's going to be chaos. Tyler Gonzalez was a little bit slow getting away, but he's back in his grid position now in the green and white car. He stalled leaving, and because he was able to leave before everyone else got rolling, he was able to retake his original grid position of seven. So long as you haven't been passed by the final car. 30 cars are on the grid, uh, and we've got the rookie championship as well. Let's have a look at the front four rows just outside the front row. We should mention Nick Nathan Nicholson, who drove up brilliantly from the back of the grid uh, yesterday. But on row five, it's Preston Pardis for Rick Ware racing alongside him, Nate Cicero, a fourth yesterday after running third for such a long time from McCombie McAleer racing in the blue 83. Aaron Jansson is on the outside of row four with Tyler Gonzalez, yesterday's winners in the Seto Motorsport Group, white and green car, the 57 for company. Row three, Jared Thomas, Double champion for JTR Motorsports Engineering was part of that pack that had to chase back to those leading three uh, yesterday. And he's got Celine Roland for company on the inside of row three. That's position five for the number 87 car. Top four then, it's BSI Racing's Connor Zilic right there yesterday. And we expect him to be there again in the 72 with Gresham Wagner, maybe one of the drives of his career to get back to that leading trio yesterday for McCumbie McAleer Racing and Nudgy's Way onto the podium and at the front of the grid. And here's a story, our top rookie, Western Workman, graduating up through the scholarship scheme at the end of last season for BSI Racing. He's on the outside of the front row with Jeremy Fletcher for McCumbie McAleer Racing on pole position. Fabulous stories all the way through the field. We'll keep you up to date with them as we go through. That not a typical race yesterday with the three car breakaway. Let's see how it pans out in the next three quarters of an hour. 
the Mazda, the Wayland Mazda safety car pulls off to the right and into the pit lane. And second round of the weekend at Sebring International Raceway with 45 minutes on the clock. It's too wide and 30 deep, so 15 <laughs> rows deep, all the way to the back of the grid. One, two, three across the track as they lift slightly from the rolling start. There's still three wide going through turn number one. A little bit of hip and shoulder there on Jared Thomas as he was on the outside of turn one. Still too wide through Christensen curve with the leading four in their grid positions. But now there's been a change because it's an MMR 1-2. Weston Workman not getting the help he was depending on from his teammate as off the track goes Gresham Wagner, defending series champion from 2021. Yesterday, he was frustrated because at the beginning of the race, he got separated from that lead trio. He spent the entirety of the rest of the race working back up to it, managed to finish on the podium. And good news for Gresham, no damage to his car. He's managed to continue. So now Jeremy Flesher is running around by himself for MMR. And up into second is Celine. Roland, who is from this part of the world and brought his dogs with him to the track today. Tyler Gonzalez already up to third place and going for second from his seventh position start. Bit of a scare for the white and green car when it wouldn't start uh, on the line and he was late away, but he managed to retake his position because he hadn't been passed by the whole field. Through turns 10 and 11, Gonzalez now into third. Behind him, that's Weston Workman. Uh, Weston Workman in the pur uh, purple car as he just loses a position to Connor Zilic, goes back up to fourth. And then gets passed by Nate Cicero as well. So Weston Workman getting shuffled back there a little bit. He had tried to work with his team car, Connor Zilic, off the start, the two of them working, but it didn't work around the outside because Jeremy Fletcher managed to check out. And now Fletcher being harassed by Celine Roland. Fletcher with heartbreak at the end of yesterday's race. He went from leading the championship back to ninth in points because on the final lap, he had a fuel pickup issue. That wow. resulted in him going from finishing well within the top five to finish last that's a huge that was a huge difference in points and he'll spend the rest of the first part of the season trying to make that up I suspect mm -hmm. Gonzalez goes to drivers right and gets a little bit of help there might just get up the inside of Celine Roland in the blue and yellow car as they go through the first part of turn 17 17 A and B here it really is like two different corners the original turning is not that tight but then it tightens in the middle and gets very bumpy and then you need to release the car of 17B to get the run down the line and that's exactly what Jeremy Fletcher has done and he's eked out a couple of tenths of a lead and it's again across the track behind that slows everybody down but Celine Roland got has got help from Zilic in the red and white car challenging to the leader now this is not oval racing but it's like oval racing because the draft is strong here the open top cars with the FIA Roll cage, make a big hole in the air. Two cars go better than one. Three cars go better than two. And 26 cars go very well indeed, which is what we had at one stage yesterday from fourth on down to the end of the field. One single line of cars. The problem is when you start fighting, you slow yourself and everybody down around you as Workman's having a look at the inside uh, along with... Uh, Aaron Johnson's in there, I noticed, down at turn seven in the number 24 car. But at the moment, the pack has stayed together. Two BSI cars leading two MMR cars, and then behind another BSI car with the Sato Motorsport Group car as well. So we do have slight packing. Poor Tyler Gonzalez out there with no friends. He has no teammate in this field. It's going to be a much more difficult drive for him, whereas JTR Motorsports Engineering, they have a horde of cars that are running together. You notice, John Somme? Jared Thomas is right in there right too. Right there too, yeah. Spot Jared relatively easily in the JTR car with the yellow roll over hoop. That's his trademark. Who's he got just uh, ahead of him? I think that's uh, Western Workman's in there as well, who is the best of the rookies. Nathan Nicholson, second best of the rookies. He is has moved up as well, as has Noah Harmon. So rookies in 10th and 11th as well, moving up through that snake of cars. Uh, these cars having a scrap, actually helping, I think, the cause of the number five yep. of Gresham Wagner, who was uh, unceremoniously off the side of the circuit at the first time of asking coming through turn four. 
he is 11 seconds off the leader at the moment but let's keep an eye on that because that is a fast car even in clean air he clawed back about six seconds over the course of half the race yesterday so it is doable for Gresham Wagner our championship leader after yesterday's race by the way 930 points for Wagner yesterday's winner it was Tyler Gonzalez 20 points behind him and then a bit of a gap back to the guy who's currently leading the way that would be Celine Rolland in third position Tyler Gonzalez with an audacious maneuver down the inside early on with just on five minutes of the 45 gone. The white car with the green stripe on the bonnet, on the hood, going down the inside at turn number one and making up positions. Another battle pack further back down through the field. That's uh, Nathan Nicholson, Preston Pardis coming through the field there. I saw in the number 51 car as well. He had a bit of an up and down race yesterday. And the incident that put Gresham Wagner off the circuit Ooh. between he and Tyler Gonzalez. Tyler, Tyler Gonzalez will be reviewed post-race. And again, much as we saw yesterday in some of the other contests, that will be because race control haven't got a definitive view on whether there was contact, so they'll take it from the onboard cameras. And remember, Tyler Gonzalez getting a 10 second penalty in one of the races at Daytona that ultimately took him out of a very good point scoring position. So for Gonzalez, he's not gonna be very happy if he goes four races in the season and gets race defining penalties in two of them. Well, at the moment, Gresham Wagner is catching Farhan Siddiqui and Leveretsky at the back of the field, but he's losing ground on this lead battle out to 12 seconds, but once he gets in a draft, he can use that to move through. Ooh. But very wide indeed for a couple of drivers there, including, I think that was Jeremy, was that Jeremy Fletcher in the white, uh, in the car, in his car that went wide in front of the white car of, uh, behind the white car rather, of Tyler Gonzalez. John Jadwam, uh, that, that's Jadwam. who it was, yep. Thank you. With the light blue livery on his race caddy car. Fastest lap of the race so far is Nate Cicero back in third position. Now we are seeing the lap times drop each time we come around, having completed two so far. Fletcher with one lap led, Rolon with one lap led. Uh, Celine knows the value of bonus points. He's going to want to stay out front. But Nate Cicero, looking to make up points after a DNF in the first race at Daytona, goes down the inside at 17. Will he be able to make it stick? Yes, he can. Got a little bit of help early on in that maneuver from Tyler Gonzalez in the mostly white car who now slots back in. So that line on driver's left will now pull by the 83 of Nate Cicero. They spread out as they come into a light braking area for turn number one. Western Workman pushes the 57 car through to the lead. I say pushes, it's aero pushing rather than bump drafting. We do see some bump drafting on the high banks of Daytona on the straights. It is actively <laughs> discouraged and uh, race control, in fact, hand out penalties if there is too much prolonged contact on the corners. I had a really good chat with Gresham Wagner's parents about that bump drafting, by the way, and just how serious an effect it is. It actually bent the subframe after the race uh, on Gresham Wagner's car, and they didn't know how bad it was until they got here to the track. Down the inside for Nate Cicero trying to make up positions. Michelin tyre were being saved by the drivers as they hit the kerb and get up into the air. Two wheels airborne for the number 72 of Connor Zilich for BSI Racing. And Western Workman in the purple, number 13. A little bit sideways there, then got a bump from the inside. Managed to hold on to his position and a bit of a bump draft. Now that was a bump draft from behind as well for the rookie, BSI Racing. We've had a substantial lead change because Tyler Gonzalez has gone to the front, is off the track, has gone Celine Rolland. Does he get it back on and continue? Yes, he does. So Celine Rolland carrying around, but Tyler Gonzalez is checking out. Gresham Wagner has caught and passed Farhan Siddiqui and Leviretsky at the back of the field. Now remember, he was nearly 12 seconds away from the lead, but I said once he got into the draft, he would make time. That 12 seconds is now 8.9 seconds. <laughs> he has to pick his way through all of, all of these cars that are behind the leaders, but he is getting aerodynamic help, and that will help his pace. Meantime, at the front of the field, we'll keep an eye on that that's going on uh, down in 
28th position now for Gresham Wagner, who was 30th and dead last at the end of the first lap, and he'd lost the toe. But at the front of the field, it is Tyler Gonzalez from Connor Zilic, from Workman, then what? Nate Cicero, then the 22 is Jeremy Fletcher, our ball sitter. We know he's got pace over a single lap. He's sitting in the draft at the moment. Jared Thomas is the 96 red car with the yellow rollover hoop. And let's just take a moment to remind ourselves, Weston Workman is a rookie. This is his third race in this series. Before this, he ran spec MX-5, very different level of competition. He's not only troubling the top three, he's looking at the back of Connor Zilich, who was the last super impressive rookie that we had very nearly won the championship in his first season of trying. Wound up finishing second, going, ooh, I think I'd like to try a chance at leading this. Connor Zilic, who is parlaying his racecraft that he's learned in this series into all kinds of other drives. Been taken on a scholarship by General Motors for NASCAR and Trans Am Racing. He's driving in a prototype this weekend in the Mobile One 12 hours of Sebring. As the points leader in LMP2 by dint of winning the watch. Yeah, indeed so. Tick tock, here he comes <laughs> up to the front of the field. Half a second behind Tyler Gonzalez at the moment that that lead has come down actually. So Gonzalez had a little time at the front of the field, but again, we have to make this point shape. As soon as the cars behind work together, then they drag back onto a single car. And we saw even three cars yesterday with well over six seconds of a lead. They could not stay away from a concerted chase back from six, seven, eight cars. It ended up just being another trio, but by then they'd got close enough to pick up the back of the draft, which comes in at about two seconds back. Tyler Gonzalez is using every ounce of energy that he has in those Michelin tires coming through the corners around the back side of the track onto, well, the area where you then set up for turn 16, raggedly pulling the car to where he wants it to try and stay ahead of Nate Cicero, Connor Zilich, Weston Workman. And there is an incident under review involving Celine Roland. I think that was him getting nerfed off the track when we saw a couple laps ago. Yeah, and he's down to 12th position now. and. Three and a half seconds away from the lead. Watch out for the yellow and blue car if you're here trackside at Sebring International Raceway. He's just in that sort of third group at the moment as through to the lead, Connor Zilic. And again, Western Workman is actually the catalyst for that. He helped that red car go to the lead. But as soon as that happens, he's got no one to draft. He's gonna have to slot in and he has. Actually, that's a lovely maneuver. Now that, that wasn't drafting. That was later on the brakes than Tyler Gonzalez. This young rookie has got some ra race craft. He might have only been driving Spec Miata, but he's getting used to this fully prepared racing version of the MX-5 with over 250 dedicated racing parts on it. He's getting used to it and he is learning how to use all of the performance. And credit to BSI, to Shea Holbrook and her whole organization, because that tells me that they have been working with the rookie, watching tape with him, trying to get him ready for this style of racing to say, hey, when this happens, help your teammate here and then you'll be able to do this. Well, now we see Tyler Gonzalez sandwiched between BSI cars in front of him and MMR cars behind, and then JTR cars right behind them. Meanwhile, on Gresham Wagner watch, the number five, <laughs> who got ahead of Kristen Hodenland, and uh, then there was about a second and a half, two seconds for him to breach across to Nick Schaefer. He's doing that at the moment, but of course now he's back in clear air again, so he's having to work very, very hard. He will catch Nick in the JTR cars. In fact, there's three JTR cars uh, together in positions 24, uh, 23, 24, and 25 with Cody Powell and Peter Atwater, the other two cars. But he's just losing a little bit of time to the leaders right now. But it, again, when he gets to the next little pack of cars, expect to see that gap coming down again. He'll want to get as far up as possible to get as many points as possible. Three distinct groups on the back straight at the moment. The top, let's call it eight cars there. Then a gap back to another five or six. 
Tyler Gonzalez likes the inside line, and it's Nate Cicero in the blue and white car this time, the 83, that pushes him to the inside line and to the lead. Incident responsibility. Jeremy for, Fletcher. Yeah, it's Jeremy Fletcher who's taken a warning after the contact with Celine Roland that pushed Celine down outside the top 10. Just waiting to see where Gresham ah, Wagner's on the back of the next group. So he will continue his move forward next time on Gresham Wagner. Watch as at the front of the field, Celine Roland has caught back up to a good pack. He's now in 11th position. Remember, he was leading this race earlier on. Yeah, uh, Gresham Wagner passed Christian Hodland and Cody Powell last lap around. And now he's right on the back of Peter at water. Then it's about a second to Sally Mott for spark performance. It's a good run from Sally, 22nd position. But then they start to see some gaps back up to the top 20. So Gresham's gonna have to work hard again. And this time he's doing it solo. Hello, Jared Thomas. Welcome to the party as he has now moved up well within the top four cars. And he's looking at the back of Weston Workman's car. He got around Cicero that time. And John Somm, he's kind of leaving his teammate and, well, rival last year in the championship a little bit further behind. But it won't take Aaron very long to catch back up. Down yep. the inside for Fletcher. Yeah, what he's noticed, I think, Shea, is that leading trio of Gonzalez, Zilich, and Weston Workman have just <laughs> pulled out a three or four MX-5 length gap. Not so, for long. No, and not for long because Thomas is organizing that chase. He's got to the front and he now, he's a quick driver, but if you can steer with him, you'll be quicker still. And I think it was Jeremy Fletcher that's right in behind him. Ooh, oh, way off the track, goes Tyler the, Gonzalez. That was our second place car. And I think there's damage to the steering on that car. I think so too. He just pulled straight off at turn 15. Now, can Gonzalez get moving again? Can he get going? Because this is going to be a 30th place finish, which is 10 points, which means he'll move from second to at least sixth. Well, he could, depending on who gets what points, so yeah, at least sixth. At the app, that could be the best. Now, this could be mana from heaven. For Gresham Wagner, if the wheel and red and white MX-5 safety car comes out, he'll be right on the back of the top 20 at that point. We're staying green at the moment. No movement from the 57 right now. Still stranded. Oh, Tyler. Oh, this is awful. My um, heart breaks for he and his team. Is it just a trick of the light, or are those front wheels not necessarily pointing in the right direction? He sort of went straight on through the S's and the Jean de Bian bend as he came down to turn 16, the Le Mans corner. Meantime, Jared Thomas. Well, Jared knows how important it is to make up positions before you go yellow. He won a race on the high banks of Daytona a couple of seasons ago by making a very well-timed pass just before the yellows came out. That's what started his first championship run. That pass Absolutely right. made it. And now he is the only guy to have won two of these championships, and he did it back-to-back -back last year. Farhan Stiki is into the pit lane, by the way, for fans of the Lightning McQueen car. We're still green. We are still not back to that part of the racetrack, though, where the incident took place. So race control has another couple of seconds where they can let Tyler Gonzalez try to get pulled off. If he can, full course, full yellow, course yellow is out. Gonzalez is not moving. Well, fair play to race control, giving oh. all of the drivers the absolute most amount of time to make their maneuvers. The good news is that there's nothing wrong with Tyler Gonzalez. There is some debris on the road further back. It looks like it might be maybe part of the under trailer, a wheel arch liner, a fender liner, but that's way back further down the circuits as uh, I think that was towards 10 or 11. Now, why is he in the boot? He's in the luggage compartment at the back of that car. He's still got power so i was wondering if he was looking for a, a battery cut off or something like that his right hand turn signal is on he's hopping back in the car now i think well he, he's got some damage at the back of that car has something been worked loose there at the back of the car and gonzalez didn't want to get out of the car rightly so whilst the track was still green he's talking to the amr safety 
crew who, as ever, are rapidly on the scene. And he's saying, look, I'm, I'm going to book, buckle myself back in. He has lost the lead lap, shit. He's not dead last, though, because no. Farhan Siddiqui was behind him, and even though he pulled into the pit lane, did not get as far around the track as no. Gonzalez. So right now he's looking at scoring 20 points on the, today's race instead of 10. Well, uh, it was a valiant effort by the driver there, Tyler Gonzalez, but I don't think his remedial work inside the boot has proved to be successful. Field just going across the start finish line and the tow truck is there. It'll take a flat toe and there is a cut off just over to drivers right there that he could get back into. Actually, right next to the, he'll come into the back of the paddock, right next to the uh, Will and Mazda MX5 hospitality. No, he's got it running. He's he has got again. it running. It, the, One lap down then. The battery connection is in that section of the car. Yeah, but the, the lights were end. on when he got out. Exactly, which is what I don't understand. But remember, this is the car that had trouble leaving the pit lane when we rolled oh. off for the false grid. Yes. So was it him stalling? Highly unlikely. This is Tyler Gonzalez. This is not somebody who's never been behind the wheel of one of these cars before. Or is there some kind of electrical gremlin that lives within this car? Fuel pump connector, maybe. Query, was that it? Because he just went off dead stick. He just ran straight off the track. Yeah. That's what made me think it was a steering issue, to be honest here. But I think that was just the uh, the trick of the light. Coming into the, pit into, into the pit lane. Now, uh, if he passes Farhan Siddiqui... He's he already ahead of him. Is he? Yes. Right, he'd, okay. He'd completed more of the circuit right, okay, on a lap you. ahead. Yes, yeah. I see what you mean. Siddiqui pulled in on the lap that Tyler Gonzalez went off the track. Yeah, Correct. Okay. So... He's coming to the pit lane. His right indicator is still on. Now, is he going to go back behind the wall? I think he probably is. Is that what he's doing? No. No, pulling into his pit box. Okay. Now, the guys are going to have a look. Right, what happened? Well, I've managed to crimp on a bit of wiring, but you guys are going to have to fix it properly. Might be what he's saying. But they've gone to work straight away. And it looks like they knew what was happening. He has got pits to car radio. They're, belt, they're buckling him in properly. And there was a connector behind the driver as well. So they've made some changes into the boot and behind the driver. Also tightened the belt up again. And sent him. Now, lights are out on the wheel. And Mazda MX-5. Safety car, what a picture that looks this year. Oh, I can't believe you turned down the opportunity to drive it anywhere. It, it wasn't so much uh, that I turned it down, that it didn't happen at the right time. If, if, if they need a volunteer? Yeah, I know. Yeah. There'll be another up. Um, there will be another opportunity, I'm absolutely certain. There we go. So the lights out, I'm and Connor Zilich then will be left to control the fail when they will and branded MX-5 pulls away. It could stay out there. It looks good it enough. It looks right. Yeah. yeah. Just It has a roof, but other than that, it, it fits right in. Well, it hasn't got all of the the uh, performance modifications on it, but it has got a roof, which will make it a little bit more aerodynamic, so it's just performance balancing. What if we put a former series champion in the safety car and let them race <laughs> with all the current competitors? <laughs> please, please, please. Come on, how great would it be to see uh, uh, Justin Piscatella and Eric Foster, Stephen McAleer and that thing out there with these guys? That would be fantastic. The, the wheel and champion car. Ooh, I like it. The uh, uh, initial observation from Tyler Gonzalez from the pit lane is that it could have been an ABS failure due to a low voltage. So he stopped to do his own little repair before okay. making it back into the pit lane. But the team will update us further as they are able to diagnose wow. and hopefully get Tyler back out. Well, he's out. No, he's out. He's, he's, he's out of the pit lane. He's, a, he's out? Yeah, yeah. No, Excellent. He, he, it was a very quick stop. And they seemed to know exactly what was going on because Tyler would have told them on the radio, I'm guessing. Whalen safety car has pulled away. Field is under the control of Connor Zilic, who started in fourth position. Green flag, 21 minutes still to go. Just under half distance. We were cleaning green for the full 45 yesterday. A slight interruption there. And Connor Zilic leads 
And once again, the leading three cars have jumped away just a little bit, but Nate Cicero makes that a foursome going through the exit of turn one, all the way to the edge of the rumble strip. Uh, into the pit lane at, from the back of the field for Parker to Long. Uh, excuse me, no, he has not pitted. Yes, he has. Yes. Good instinct. Yeah. Stick with it. Oh, no, no, that's not the pit lane. That's, oh. that's the edge of the track. My apologies. I thought I saw him behind the wall. He's actually on pit on the pit straight to driver's left. I thought it was going so slowly that he was in the pit lane. I just caught a flash of him going underneath the Global Broadcast Centre. And that's that cannot be left there, I don't think, that car. We don't normally have incidents at that part of the track, but yesterday we did have a big moment for Preston Pardis. We saw his mirror covering on the inside of turn one. That's because he actually hit the wall quite hard in yes. turn one. So it is possible. Gresham Wagner has made his way to 20th position and now only five seconds away from the leader with 20 minutes left on the clock. Stay Keep an eye out for the number five. Stay tuned to Gresham Wagner watch. Wagner watch, yes, absolutely. Oh, big sideways moment in the middle of the pack there. That was right in front of the third group. Was that... Uh, might have been the group just behind Jesse Love, who's our guest driver this weekend, Arca Series champion. 2023 Arca Series champion, the youngest ever NASCAR sanctioned series champion and race winner, as a matter of fact, for Jesse Love. Came to the series because he's a big fan of it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Tyler Gonzalez then, one lap off the lead, but coming on to the, again, onto the end of the pack just now going through turn 16 as the leaders are exiting turn one, uh, turn 17. And while that doesn't sound too bad when you're talking about corner numbers, it's very far apart. Jesse Love with the right uh, mirror of the car ahead of him, just uh, flapping in the wind a little bit. Jeff, Jesse up to 13th position in that number two, Hendricks Motorsport. <laughs> Look who's in third all of a sudden. It's Jared Thomas. Here's Jesse Love down the inside. Number 55 is Jonathan Nerdorf, for BSI Racing. Wiley campaigner, and Love's giving him a real good goal there. Bit of a working over. Preston Pardis in the 51 Rick Ware Racing car is in behind those two. Just keep an eye open for that little battle as they come down to. Turn seven, big throw down the inside. That's Nathan Nicholson trying to make a move on Julian Da Costa. That's a rookie battle for <laughs> second and third in the rookie race here this morning. Da Costa, who's out of Mayaka City, so La Bamba fans in the infield. Number 78 is your driver. Cheer him on as he tries to fend off fellow rookie Nathan Nicholson, who's trying to fend off fellow rookie Noah Harmon. Good battle developing between the three of them. As out front, it is still Connor Zilich, then Weston Workman in second, looking at possibly Great getting look. his first ever podium. Great Jared look. Thomas in third. Is that Jeremy Fletcher in fourth? Cicero's there too. Aaron Johnson has moved up into the top five now as well. Gresham Wagner, another two positions made up and holds at around about five and a half seconds from the leader. FCY is out. Has to be for. Well, it's the number 32 car that is off. In fact, we've got two cars off the circuit. The 42 of Parker Delong, the rookie from Parker Delong Racing. Uh, that car on the driver's left of the front straight and also off the circuit, Christian Hodenland. He's had a horrible <laughs> race. He's just dropped down through the field here, but he's got going again from turn 13, tower turn. Do you want to make your heart smile a little bit, John? Scholarship winners from Mazda's past are currently first through fifth. Wow. We've got Connor Zilich out front, who got it, what would that have been, three years ago now. Weston Workman, who got it last year. Jared Thomas, who got it five or six years ago now. Nate Cicero, and then Aaron Johnson. So what was the problem up at tower turn? Answer, oh, a hit. 
I was going to say, came in backwards, but got some help there. That was Nick Schaefer in the number 88. That's the Tiger livery car. So Christian Hordenland uh, unceremoniously uh, ushered off the circuit. That will be being looked at in race control. He got mauled. Clawed off the track, yeah. Yeah, yeah mauled. <laughs> but he will get onto, back onto the back of the field. Now, somebody's just popped Tyler. into the pits. Was Tyler's back in. Again? Yeah. Yep. Oh, how unfortunate. Um, even though we're under yellow, that's another lap led for Connor Zilich. He has now led the most laps of this race. He had previously been tied with Gonzalez. Doesn't look like Gonzalez is going to take the honor for leading the most laps, though. Uh, Zilich could claim it also uh, applicable at this stage. Celine Roland, if he could get to the front, uh, he could challenge Zilich and Jeremy Fletcher. There's clearly something that is rattling around or coming undone in the back of Tyler Gonzalez's car. They know what they're looking at. I just think they can't do a full-time fix on it at the moment. They had racer tape out there and all sorts of things. It sounds like it's a connection uh, to me that's making and breaking and causing some problems uh, in, the, in the brake system itself. We mentioned how unusual yesterday's race was at the beginning. Today's race is also unusual because we've seen the Whelan Mazda MX-5 safety car twice. Yeah, good point. Normally our races go green. If they go yellow, it tends to be for very short periods of time and only once. So this is quite atypical for this series. Uh, and what's interesting is that uh, both of the incidents have been uh, mechanical rather, yeah. it would seem, rather than contact related. And that is exceptionally unusual. These cars come in from Japan and as a, as a street stock car. So basically a car that you would buy off the showroom floor, two litre, 180 horsepower, four cylinder, uh, normally aspirated engine. They go to Fliss Performance, which is up in Daytona, and the brothers Fliss and their hard working team go to work on them. Now, when I say go to work on them, I actually mean they break them down like a Lego kit. That's what I was going to say. They literally strip the cars back to their component parts. First thing, engine and gearbox comes out. Gearbox is split off and put to one side. It is not, uh, it's not required. The engine is, and that's put to another place, and it is sealed so that there can be no chicanery or jiggery-pokery from any of the teams. So a Mazda Sports seal goes on that. When that goes back into the engine bay, it's made into a SADEV sequential racing gearbox. And by the time that ha has happened, the car's been resprayed white. It's got a Multimatic DSV adjustable suspension a new set of racing wheels and a set of Michelin slicks, a completely stripped out interior with a bespoke racing seat, steering wheel and instrument package, as well as an FIA approved rollover bar and fire suppression system, and about 240 odd other specific racing parts. And that's when it goes out the door. This is a proper, proper race car. A dozen minutes are left in the second round of two this weekend for Whelan Mazda MX-5 Cup here at Sebring. And it is Connor Zilic who's worked his way to the front from fourth position on the starting grid. From front row starter, Western Workman in the purple car. Then the 96 of Jared Thomas. Then Nate Cicero leads a hungry pack of chasing cars with Aaron Johnson actually, he's just come to the front there as well. And Jeremy Fletcher, Celine Roland in the blue, white, and bright yellow car. De Costa, Nicholson, both rookies. Three rookies in the top 10 at the moment. Then a little bit of a gap. Remember, first lap of championship leader Gresham Wagner was bumped to the back of the field. And he's now made his way up to 18th position, four and a half seconds away from that lead battle. Somebody's got straight on at turn seven. And looks like they got stopped, but they're going to lose an awful lot of real estate. It's Gresham it's Wagner. Gresham. I, do you know, I, I, I was just about to say, I thought that was the number five car. It is Gresham Wagner. Great pickup by our camera operators around the circuit. 
kudos to them. All racing fans, they always seem to know where to look. Leading Re trio is actually breaking away, John. So what happened to Wagner? Did he get a little push? Hard to say. Oof, can't tell from that. Uh, All that hard work to get himself into the mid-teens, and he's going to rejoin right at the back. There is runoff there. In fact, that's the old circuit, believe it or not, before they put the hairpin, or as some people rather unkindly called it, the safety pin in, there, in front of the hotel. Connor Zilich leading, Weston Workman leading Jared Thomas. Then a bit of a gap back to Nate Cicero with Jeremy Fletcher and Celine Roulon as that second trio. They need to stop what they're doing right now, which is battling amongst themselves and work together to get back up to the leading group. Otherwise, the podium positions could come from the leading trio, assume they don't decide to go all cowabunga on one another in this final 10 minutes of racing. Connor Zilich will take the 10 bonus points for leading the most laps. Nobody will be able to lead as many as he has. He's on lap number six at the front as it is right now. We should have about another five laps to go. Just to let you know that Tyler Gonzalez has come back out the pits, but uh, he's uh, obviously not on the lead lap now, but he is in 28th position. I don't think, unless some problems be before anyone ahead of him, he won't on race pace be able to make up uh, any better than that. I'm waiting to see where Gresham Wagner has recovered to. 24th now, so he lost a, a good half dozen positions, maybe more. So it's 40 or 30 points for Gonzalez at this point and 70 for Wagner. Both of our championship leaders going to fall down the board once again. It's much like Jeremy Fletcher experienced yesterday. Silich work with Thomas, then a second and a half gap, and that's dangerous at this time. Jeremy Fletcher next in line, trying to marshal a uh, fight back with Celine Roland and Aaron Johnson. There's some talent there, there's some speed there. Huge battles in the low to mid teens. 15 going through there is Sally Mott. She's in 21st position, having a cracking scrap with Cody Powell, fellow, fellow rookie. Peter Atwater's right in there as well, and Woody Hyman right behind them. So a good four or five car scrap at the bottom end of the top 20. But at the moment, it is still Connor Zillage. Western Workman, who was there or thereabouts for most of the race yesterday, before getting split from the leading three. And he'll not want that to happen today. It's now a leading four. The quartet made up by I think that's, is that Fletcher that's got on the back of them? I think Cicero, it is. I thought. It's, could be. Can't see the car at the moment no. because they're so close. It is Fletcher. It is Jeremy Fletcher. Quite a lot of blue cars this year. That seems to be a color of, color, color of choice. Western Workman to the lead. The rookie's gonna lead a lap and does so. What happened to Cicero? How did he drop back out of the initial pack? He's shown as down in 13th 13, now. 16. 16. Yeah. Goodness. Well, that was a bad lap for Nate Cicero, race winner of race number two at Daytona. Who do we need to keep an eye oh, on yeah. in this initial sextet? Uh, Celine Roland, race winner here in 2021. He dropped three seconds on that lap alone. Uh, I think he might have already been out of that leading group. So is he nursing a problem? Questions that we will have to ask after the race, but that is, I mean, after a disappointing fourth yesterday, that sounds odd to say, but he was in third, second or first for the vast majority of the race in that leading trio. And then to be pipped for the last step of the podium by Jared Thomas at the very last run of the flag, that would have been a disappointing fourth. Very much so. And now he's dropped way out of the main point scoring positions, holding on to 16th position, Nate Cicero, the number 83, with Graham West ahead of him, and Heather Hadley working her way through the late teens. 
in the BSI Racing number 54. She's sitting in behind Cicero. Weston Workman, ahead of Connor Zilich, ahead of Jeremy Fletcher, Jared Thomas, Celine Rulon, and Aaron Johnson. The, the last three names are the ones that are the guys who have been in this series long enough to know how to work together to try and catch back up and pass that initial pack. Out of the initial pack, Weston Workman, rookie, we've touched on that already. Jeremy Fletcher, only year two. Connor Zilich, year two and a half. But he figured it out quickly enough, yes, so he he's did. fine. He's a wily old veteran. And he's been doing a lot of racing, not just here in MX5, as we mentioned. But but here at Sebring, he yeah. already won his Trans Am race earlier this month. That's a good point. So he knows the circuit, although it wasn't exactly the same layout. But uh, he knows the bumps, and particularly at turn 17 here, which is prime real estate for setting up you run to the line on the last lap and that's what all of these drivers will be thinking about now with four and a half minutes to go and the leading trio is now a half dozen drivers hungry for success three spots on the podium three drivers will be disappointed damage to Woody Hyman's car. The bumper is starting to come off on the right-hand side as Peter Atwater is now trying to spin back around through turn 17. So maybe some kind of issue between the two of them. I know they were close together on track. Yeah, good, good point. Should be white flag next time by. Two minutes, 26 seconds, yeah. Boy, Western Workman was wishing that that last lap was the checkered flag. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thing is, he's got to the front. It might not be exactly the right time to get to the front, but this is all good learning experience for the rookie. Just his fourth race in his Wheeler Mazda MX-5 Cup career. A bit further back, Woody Hyman has been off the circuit at turn one, so maybe that damage just breaking his concentration. Now, this is looking very interesting. This is what we expect to see with MX-5. So there was Ooh, yes. multiple car contact at turn 17 last time around, including Woody. Who was that who ran smack into him, though? Was it Nate Cicero? Got airborne, actually. I think it was. Or was it Gresham Wagner? Might have been I Wagner, think that's you Wagner. know? I it think that's Wagner, the first single number, the five car. So Gresham has had a very eventful race, which he uh, would rather not have had. He, I'm sure right now he would have taken a very boring race to sixth or seventh position. He's going to do well to finish in the top 20 now, having got up to, I think, uh, 16th position. Celine Rolland is off the course at turn 12 and behind the wall, according to our timing and scoring. No! That happened whilst we were trying to work out what was going on with Woody Hyman. So oh. coming down to what will be the white flag this time around, that has split the lead pack. He was right in there. Celine Roland with the checkered flag just maybe four miles away, a little bit more, and he will drop all the way down. And he was looking to inherit the points lead given the bad day that was happening for both uh, Gresham Wagner and Tyler Gonzalez. And then there were four and also stopped. Julian Da Costa, well, as Connor Zilich makes a dive down the inside to turn three and then tucks back in. Da Costa was running just at the edge of the top 10 and ran about fourth in the rookie battle. So still Western Workman leading from Zilich, from Fletcher and from Jared Thomas. Jared Thomas has been in this position before. He was in this position yesterday, fourth of four on the last lap. Now there's a little bit of a gap to the number 56 of Nathan Nicholson, a rookie, another rookie by the way, two rookies in the top six, down the inside, at the hairpin for Jeremy Fletcher, side by side, this is great news for, for Workman here, as the two cars behind are scrapping, and that's <laughs> let him break away, Fletcher goes into second, Zilich down to third, Jared Thomas still in fourth position, he'll want to make a move, he's seeing that purple car getting a little bit smaller, up ahead of them, these guys start scrapping for second and third on the podium. That could be really good news for the rookie who leads. Is this going to be a trademark of MMR? 
DNF or finish last in the first race, win the second. That's what happened to Nate Cicero at Daytona. Yesterday, Jeremy Fletcher finished last in the race. Now he's looking at the back of a rookie's bumper, trying to get around Weston Workman. And both of these guys are fighting for their first ever series win. This is full on elbows out. There is the run down to turn 17, Sunset, which is an overtaking spot, but also importantly in this particular category of racing, it's the run to the line. <laughs> Workman's off the track. He's got all four Michelins over the white line. He's defending. He saw what happened yesterday where there was defense, but they weren't too far across. And Tyler Gonzalez got down the inside of the last corner. Fletcher went around the outside going into 17. They're Touch. bumping. Side by side. And here comes the third place car. It's going to be Connor Zilic, I think, that takes it, but it's another four-no finish. Count this one back, that's Workman. Workman's got it. Workman has got it on the run to the line. I put my money on the 72. Looked like they had won it as they come across. My goodness me, how tight was that? Answer, 0 0.004 of a second between first and second, and under a tenth between second and third, just on a tenth for the top four. That is Whelan Master MX-5. The top five, in fact, is separated by just on two tenths of a second literally inches between the two cars. Well, shit, absolutely extraordinary. Much more what we're used to seeing in Wheel and Mazda MX-5 Cup. Weston Workman wins his first race for PSI ahead of his teammate, Connor Zilich. Third, Jeremy Fletcher for McCombie McAleer. It was stout defense down the back straight by Weston Workman in the purple, number 13. Tyler Gonzalez made the best yesterday and came uh, down through a gap on the inside. He wasn't going to allow either of the competitors to do that. Jeremy Fletcher was nosed ahead for a moment into the first part of 17, then side by side. I felt sure that the number 72 was going to get the run, but there was a further touch there side by side. And coming up to the line, it was Zilic, it was Zilic until it wasn't. And Weston Workman, the scholarship winner from the end of last year, takes a classic Wheel and Mazda MX-5 victory. The margin, 0 0.004 of a second to his teammate. Top five separated by just on a couple of tens. Workman, Zilic, Fletcher on the podium, Aaron Thomas, uh, uh, Jared Thomas and Aaron Johnson, the unlucky pair to miss out. Nathan Nicholson is the second best of the rookies in sixth position. And looking down the field, Jesse Love into the top dozen on his series debut. The man who's got an ARCA championship trophy sitting on his mantelpiece at home. Heather Hadley uh, well up there as well in 14th position. Sally Mott in 17th position. Gresham Wagner eventually coming back to 18th position. It could have been better. Shea has the Wheel and Mazda MX-5 Cup points unofficially at this point. Someone please go check the pulse of Wesley Workman, Weston's dad, because I guarantee you he's down in the pit lane barely breathing. Awesome. We have not a new championship leader. Gresham Wagner, by dint wow. of that fight back, is leading on 1070 points. But in second now, the rookie and today's winner, 1,050 points. He is only 20 off the lead. In third is Connor Zilich on 1,000 points even. And then in fourth, we have a two-way tie between Tyler Gonzalez and Jared Thomas. Jared's right there once again, 960 points for both of them. And Aaron Johnson, three-way tie. Yeah, and Jeremy Fletcher picked up the 10 points for the fastest lap, Connor Zilic, the extra points for leading the most. Then laps. it's a four way tie for fourth in the championship because Jeremy Fletcher and with them too. Well, that was much more what we're used to seeing. What a great second race and stories up and down the field with 
all kinds of issues. Yesterday's winner didn't get to the chequered flag in anywhere the way he wanted to. Western Workman leads a BSI 1-2 with Jeremy Fletcher in third here at Sebring.